What is up guys, welcome to the video. As promised, this video is going to be your one-stop shop for everything that you could possibly want or really need to know about macronutrients, macros, whatever you wanna call them. I go super in depth on what macros are, how to set them for yourself, how to set your calories, all these things, and so much more. So if you've ever wondered what are macronutrients, how do they fit in my life, and anything like that, this video is your one-stop shop for everything you could know. I really get in depth here, so stick around to the end to make sure that you're setting yourself up on the right foot when you set your macros. And real quick, make sure to hit that sub button if you're not already subscribed. That way you see more content like this delivered straight to you. And without further ado, we'll dive right in to how to set your macros. All right, like I said in the intro, today's video is all about macros or macronutrients, whatever you wanna call them. So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you what are macronutrients, how to figure out what your macronutrient split should be. And then I'm gonna tell you how you can actually put this into your life in a meaningful way. So without further ado, let's start by talking about what macronutrients are. So odds are, if you've ever looked at a nutrition label on any type of food that you buy, you'll see total fats, total protein, and total carbohydrates in there listed as grams. And then you'll see a much bigger number, which is the calories for the actual thing you're eating. And you may have wondered, how do we get from these little numbers in grams to this big number in calories. Well, this is how. So one gram of protein is roughly four calories. That's the amount of energy it takes to burn one gram of protein. Carbohydrates are roughly four calories per gram as well. And then you have fats, which are roughly nine calories per gram. So when we see the total amount of grams in protein, fats, and carbs on a nutrition label, we take that number in grams, multiply it times how many calories per macronutrient. So if you're figuring out how many calories is 20 grams of protein, you would take 20 times four to get your number. Now you do that for proteins, fats, and carbs, add up those three numbers, and what you have is a total calorie count. And right now you might be listening to this and thinking, wait, so are macronutrients just the same as calories? And the answer to that is, Kind of, yeah. But macronutrients are a more in-depth way to look at the calories in your diet and what constitutes those calories. So to recap what macronutrients are, you have protein coming in at roughly four calories per gram, you have carbohydrates coming in at roughly four calories per gram, and you have fats coming in at roughly nine calories per gram. You take the calories per gram of each macronutrient on any given food, and that's how you get a total calorie number for that food. So that's great. Now you know exactly what macronutrients are, but what does that have to do with the food that you actually eat? And why is it important that you even know these things? Well, odds are, if you're watching this, you care to some extent about your body composition and you care about how much muscle and fat you have on your body. And when I have clients working towards a specific fitness goal, I have almost all of them track their macros, and this is why. The combination of macronutrients in your diet matters a lot, not just for body composition, but for your general health as well. If you're trying to maintain, build, or just keep the muscle you have on your physique, Eating an adequate amount of protein is really important. And if you're not paying attention to how much protein is in your diet, how do you know if you're eating enough? Fats are really important for general health and hormonal health. How do you know if you're eating enough fat in your diet to support these functions? And lastly is carbs, which is probably everyone's favorite macro. Think bread, pasta, cereal, sugar, that stuff. Knowing how much of these three macronutrients matters a lot for your body composition. But how do you figure out how much protein how many carbs and how much fat you're gonna be eating in your diet. Well, first we have to start with figuring out your total daily energy expenditure or TDEE. Now there's a lot of ways that you can find to figure out your TDEE. I've seen all kinds of calculators. You've probably have heard your body weight times 14 or 15, anything like that. What I use for my clients and what I personally use for myself is the catch McCardle equation times an activity multiplier. So let me break that down. First, by starting with the catch mccardle equation. So the catch mccardle calculation isn't to find your TDEE. It's supposed to find your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate. 
Your basal metabolic rate is the amount of calories that your body needs to function, assuming you don't do anything else. BMR does not account for activity level, for exercise, or anything like that. That's where the activity multiplier comes into place. What is the catch mccardle equation? The catch mccardle equation is 370 plus 21.6 times your lean body mass in kilograms. Now, I'm sorry if I made you feel like you're in math class all over again, but this is one of the better equations I've found out there. Now, you may have heard something in that equation, though, that you're like, well, I don't know what that is, and it's probably your lean mass in kilograms. So your lean mass in kilograms is essentially your weight in kilos times one minus your body fat percentage. Once again, we're probably at another sticking point where you might be thinking, well, I don't know my body fat percentage. There are a lot of things out there that you can buy that market themselves as being able to tell you your body fat percentage, whether that's a DEXA scan, calipers, an in-body machine, or one of those scales or handheld devices that uses bioelectric impedance. The reality of this situation is there is no great way to determine what your actual body fat percentage is outside of an autopsy. Now that may sound like, oh no, I'm gonna have a wrong number in there, but you're gonna be fine, I promise. So if all those things aren't great, what should you do? For a lot of my clients, I have them take photos and then I estimate their body fat percentage based off of photos of them. And this is something that you don't need someone else to do. There are a lot of great resources out there to figure out what your body fat percentage is, and you might be off by three, four, five, or even 6%. And odds are you're still gonna be okay even if you're off by that much. Now I'll explain why later on in the video. Now that you know how to find your body fat percentage, you'll be able to find out what your lean mass in kilos is. After you plug all that information into the catch mccardle equation, of which there are many online calculators that will do this for you before you whip out a pen and paper, after you get the number from the catch mccardle equation, you're going to multiply that by an activity multiplier. And that multiplier is on a scale of 1.3 to about 1.7. Do 1.3 if you are on the low end of activity. Think like sedentary, you sit at a desk all day, maybe you go to the gym a few times a week. And then on the high end would be somebody like a construction worker or a personal trainer, somebody who's on their feet all day and is constantly moving. Just like body fat percentage, you may be a little off on that and it's gonna be okay. Like I said, I'll tell you later on why it's okay. But after you've got your BMR from the Catch McArdle and your activity multiplier based on your activity level, you multiply those two numbers together and the number that you get is your total daily energy expenditure or your TDEE. That number is roughly how many calories you should be eating in order to maintain your body weight. At this point in the video, you may be wondering, but what about macros? This is all calorie talk. We're getting there, I promise. We have one more step before we get to that, and that's determining the size of your deficit or your surplus if you're trying to bulk and build muscle. For the sake of this video, and because most people are trying to lose fat, I'm gonna be talking about deficits. You have your TDEE, you have your big calorie number. Now it's about fitting that calorie number into your goals. So if fat loss is your goal, and you want to lose one pound of fat a week, you're gonna to wanna to have a deficit every single day of about 500 calories. By doing this, at the end of the week, you'll be in a deficit of 3,500 calories, which is roughly the amount of calories required to burn one pound of fat. Now, you wouldn't have to be in a 500 calorie deficit every single day of the week. And in fact, for most of my clients, I don't do that because most of us have differences in their life day to day. I have some clients that I work with who we keep a higher deficit in the 750 calorie range throughout the week. And then I have them in a much smaller deficit on Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday because they know those are the days when they're gonna be eating more, they're gonna be doing more stuff, and they're gonna wanna have more calories and more leeway in their diet on those days. So for you personally, if fat loss is your goal, I would start with about a 500 calorie deficit a day and go from there, especially if you're not working with a coach, if you're not working with somebody who can help guide you through this process and advise you along the way, a 500 calorie deficit a day is gonna be a good mark for you. Now, of course, there is a lot of nuance to this. If you have a lot of weight to lose, you can take that deficit much lower than 500 calories. If you have barely any fat to lose, it might not make sense for you to make a huge deficit day to day. But what does that deficit actually look like? Let's just say that your TDEE is exactly 2,500 calories. 
you've decided that you wanna be eating in a deficit of 500 calories a day, so we take your actual calorie number that you're gonna be working with to find your macros, it's coming people, to 2,000 calories a day. Now we know that 2,000 calories is a 500 calorie deficit for you, and that's what you're gonna be eating at in order to lose the body fat that you want to. Now we can talk about macros, and we're gonna break these down by protein, fats, and carbs. You can exactly set your protein level, your fat level, and your carb level just from watching this video. So let's start with protein. A question that I actually get asked a lot is how much protein should I actually be eating? And the answer that I always give people is somewhere in the range of 0.7 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. So if you are a 190 pound man and you're gonna be eating one gram per pound of body weight, that's 190 grams of protein per day. Why 0.7 to 1.2? Because that is a pretty big range. And the reason that range exists is because it really depends on the person. It depends on who you are, what type of person you are, what your diet is like, and all the rest of it. 1.2 grams per pound of body weight can be a lot of protein for somebody. But if you're really focused on maintaining and holding on to every little last bit of muscle that you have when eating in deficit, and you don't care about how much protein you have to shovel down every day, 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight might be a pretty good level for you. Now, if you're a small woman who doesn't really like meat, or you have a hard time getting like protein sources into your diet, I'd put you in the 0.7 or even potentially lower than that if necessary to make it fit into your life. Because sure, there's all the optimization things, but taking the bird's eye view from all this stuff, what does it matter if you hold on to an extra half a pound of muscle by keeping protein really high if it makes your life super miserable eating that much protein every day. So if that means adjusting based purely on lifestyle and mentality, I will absolutely do it because adherence and consistency is far more important than these little optimization changes. So to recap protein, you're gonna set your protein at 0.7 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight, depending on your life and your lifestyle. Now, let's talk about fats. I set almost all my clients at at least 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight. The reason being is that if you take it lower than 0.3 grams per pound of body weight, or even maybe 0.25 grams per pound of body weight, you can really start messing with issues around your hormones and all the rest of it, because fat is important. You need fat to live. Just like protein, it's on a scale. So my scale is 0.3 to one gram of fat per pound of body weight. And similar to protein, this range exists because everybody's different. Some people naturally have higher fat diets than other people. And other people have much lower fat diets than other people. If I tell a client of mine just 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight, and they're eating, let's say 35 grams of fat per day, that's not a lot of fat in your diet and you're gonna to start to feel that in your food choices. Fat makes food taste good, and the less of it you have, odds are the more boring your diet's gonna be. So that 0.3 to one gram per pound of body weight really depends on you, your diet, and your lifestyle. Now third and finally, we're gonna be talking about carbs. So carbs are essentially filler in your diet. They absolutely are important, they absolutely have function in the body, but in terms of maintaining a specific amount of carbs for internal health function, you can go really low with carbs, i.e. the keto diet and things like that. But if you're a normal person, you probably love carbs and want them in your diet. So to figure out how many carbs you should be eating, you're essentially gonna fill the rest of the calories that you have left after figuring out your protein and fats, allotting the rest of those calories to carbohydrates. So at this point in the video, you might be thinking, okay, we're just working in grams though. How do I get that into calories? How do I figure out from the calories I have left, how many grams of carbohydrates I should be eating? And the answer brings us back up to the start of the video. We know that carbohydrates are roughly four calories per gram of carb. So to illustrate this, we'll use a made up person. We'll call him John. And John is our client who we did the calculation with the Catch McArdle for, and we set him at 2000 calories. So let's say that John is a five foot 10, 170 pound man. We set John's protein at one gram per pound of body weight. And that brings us to 170 grams of protein for John every day. So John is set to 0.4 grams of fat per pound of body weight. That's gonna put John at 68 grams of fat every day. Right now we got protein at 170 and fat at 68 grams. Now we're bringing this back into carbs because that's our third and final thing to figure out. So we know that John's protein is set to 170 grams 
and we know that John's fat is set to 68 grams a day. So if we add up the calorie total of his 170 grams of protein and his 68 grams of fat, that's gonna bring us to a total calorie count of 1,292 calories. Now you'll remember that John has 2,000 calories total in his day to play with. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take 2,000 and subtract 1,292 from that. And that leaves us with 708 calories left in his day to devote to carbs. So how do we get from 708 calories to a specific gram amount of carbohydrates to eat? Well, we know that carbs are four calories per gram. So we're gonna take 708 and divide that by four. That's gonna give us 177 grams of carbs. Just like that, we have our fake client John's macros. We have his total calories set at 2,000 calories a day, and that breaks down into 170 grams of protein, 68 grams of carbs, and 177 grams of carbs. Now, if you made it this far in the video, you may be thinking, wow, that seems like a lot just to figure out the type of stuff that I need to eat. But keep in mind, I'm making this as detailed as possible for you. And I still left out a lot of more nuanced stuff that really depends person to person. Realistically, to figure out your macros, you could A, just find a macro calculator on the internet if you wanna be boring about it, or you could just sit down with the calculator app on your phone and a pen and paper and just figure this stuff out in probably less than five minutes. But like I said, I made this video as detailed as possible so that you guys could have a one-stop shop for everything that you need to know about macros in your life. Now, of course, this was the most basic approach, taking the 2,000 calories and breaking it down like that. Now, for some clients, I have carbs higher on training days as a, and fats higher on rest days, and I'll change with those ratios with my clients. But if you're just trying to figure out, okay, what are macros and how do I set them for myself? This is gonna get you 99% of the way there. Now, there is one really big caveat to all of this stuff that I've talked about is that even the best calculation, even this calculation that I've broken down for you is at best a good estimate. The only way to know for sure if these numbers work for you is to eat at that level that you set for yourself and eat there accurately and also weighing yourself over time. So you know, okay, these are my deficit macros and if I'm eating them and I'm gaining weight, then your numbers are wrong. If you're eating in your deficit macros and you're losing weight, you can say, okay, these are good enough for me, this is working. But just remember, this is only one part of the puzzle when you're trying to figure this stuff out. Keeping accurate measurements of your body, taking progress photos, hopping on the scale, these are all gonna be important ways to measure your progress against the macros that you've set for yourself. That's gonna leave it there for macros. I hope this video was easy enough to digest for you and that you seriously learned something along the way. Really appreciate all the support that I've seen thus far on YouTube. If you haven't seen my last video, The Full Day of Eating, that video is doing really well and I'm glad you guys responded to that in the way you did. And if you don't wanna miss the next video, make sure you subscribe, all right? We are growing in subs. We have a small army here and I am so excited about it. So like the video, comment on it. If you don't know what your macros are and you leave a comment below and you made it to the end of the video and you're still confused, I will do them for you, but you gotta let me know in the comments or over my DMs on Instagram. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all those things, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,